is stood for statistical analysis software see mainly by using SAS we can do the analysis and reporting both we can perform analysis and reporting so we have some data warehousing tools also in data warehousing we have ETL tools and VLAP tools general concept so ETL tools ETL stands for extraction transformation loading means we can extract the data from different data sources we can do the transformations as per the requirement and then we can load the data into target database so these are the best ETL tools in the market Informatica, Data Stage, Avenue, so on and we have VLAP tools also online analytical processing tools mainly to generate the reports different types of reports so here we can use business objects, cognos, so on means to complete one project we need to use two tools here one ETL tool and one VLAP tool suppose Informatica with business objects data stage with Cognos like that but here in our SAS these two concepts are inbuilt we do have ETL concepts and VLAP concept these two concepts we can use in our SAS so this is the first advantage so by using SAS we can do the analysis as well as reporting both say SAS was created by this person Jim Goodnight he was a statistical professor in USA uh, in early of 1970 he got one project related to agricultural research data for that project he created essays at that time you can see the history of SAS see earlier it was a tool statistical analysis and system so mainly drag and drop concept and basic analysis later they have implemented programming also in SAS software programming parts. See SAS was developed from C language the basic is the C so in our SAS also you can use the C language concepts loops, arrays, pointers, functions all those we can use in our, in our SAS also. The concept is same but way of writing is different we will discuss all those in our SAS also again. So here we can do all kind of analysis regression, correlation and our everything and the programming parts and see here within the SAS you can do the data entry the data retrieval, data management, report rating, graphical designing, error handlings, edit checks, everything we can perform within the SAS. Even it doesn't require any other database support or any other tool. So everything we can perform within the SAS. So that's the reason SAS is called as a statistical software package. So end-to-end -end concept we can implement here. Okay. Next, this is the general information from the SAS website. So nowadays in the world, nearly 118 countries are using SAS, mainly for these industries. Aerospace, automotive, banking, communication, education, finance sector, healthcare. In all these sectors, we can use SAS. Simple, wherever analysis and reporting is required, there we can implement SAS. So this is the SAS company official website, www.sas.com. Please go through the website, you can find more details. Even you can get the list of clients also. Suppose select banking sector, you can get the list of clients. In the world, which banks are using SAS? You can get the list. I say, say Bank of America, Barclays, Maximum, all MNC banks in the world are using SAS. Like that finance sector, healthcare, you can go. And in healthcare, we have a special advantage for SAS. That is, SAS is the only software in the world approved from FDA. Food and Drug Administration. So we should use only SAS, mainly in the clinical trials. See in other, suppose banking, finance, you can go for SAP tools or data addressing, anything. It's an optional. It depends upon the client requirement. But in healthcare, it's mandatory because SAS is the only one software approved from FDA, Food and Drug Administration. So you can see it's a main reason behind it. Why we are using only SAS in the clinical trials. Okay. Come to the SAS software mainly here. So what are the concepts are there? How we'll deal the project in the real time? See here. So in SAS mainly we have four tools. See these. Data access, data management, data analysis and data presentation. So these are the main four tools in SAS. Okay, see here one by one. First data access. Means accessing the data from different sources. It could be relational databases, non-relational databases, or to read maybe. We can access the data. Okay, observe here. Okay, now I'm doing a project. 
it may be a clinical project or banking whatever suppose I'm doing a clinical project first I got a chance to work as a clinical SAS programmer okay my client is in USA and they're conducting the trials in different countries throughout the world India UK Australia Japan so on because to test their drug and different people and different weathers and here there is a different databases in different countries to store the data Oracle Excel access terra data text document so on so before you're going to start the project this is the first step first you need to access the data from these different data sources to SAS SAS software for that here we have the SAS access tool to access the data from external data source to SAS from outside to SAS we can import data from any database and here we have different methods for SAS access say so import procedure SQL procedure library reference in file statement wizard method so on so in our classes we will discuss all these methods with example with real time example how to connect to the oracle how to connect to the SQL server excel access uh, text documents all this we will discuss with examples so in all this, this is a very very important method, SQL procedure, um, pass through facility concept. You can connect with any database by using ODBC connections also. So this, this is the SAS access first tool. And see here, even in banking project, what are it may be? It's the same concept. You may get different different databases. From those databases, you need to store the data, import the data. So for that, we are using using the SAS access as a first tool here. Yeah. Next, see here, managing the data, means data management. See here, in data access part, we got the data from different data sources. Obviously, it should be in the different format. Directly, we can't apply any statistics on the raw data. That is a raw data. We can't apply any statistics directly on the raw data. It may need some changes. That is called data management. Okay, see the definition here for data management. To convert raw data into SAS required format for analysis or raw data into business required format for analysis. Okay, we can make some changes here in the data management. So this is the big tool in SAS. So many transformations are there. We need to discuss all those. Formatting the data, joining the tables, appending the data, creating new columns, entry checks, so many transformations. This is the big tool. Okay, see one example to understand the definition here. Okay, see, I'm doing a project here. In my project, this is one of the column, salary. Actually, this project related to one MNC company, Finance Project. They have branches throughout the world, in India, USA, European countries, like that. Okay, here, it's a global database for that company. They're paying the salaries like this for the employees, for Indian employees in the rupees for USA employees, for European country employees like this. Okay, observe this data. It's an alphanumeric data actually. It's mixing up some characters, special characters and numbers. Okay, it's an alphanumeric data. By default, SAS will read this data under text variable only. Okay, under text variable. Okay, so now mm -hmm. this is the client requirement here. For all the employees, we have to calculate what is the total salary and what is the average salary in INR, in Indian rupees. This is the client record. Mm -hmm. Suppose one lakh employees are there throughout the world. For all of them, we have to calculate this. A small analysis. One thing, see here. It is a text variable. We know one thing. For text variables, we can't do any analysis. Only on numeric variables, we can apply the statistics and we can do some analysis. So here, first I will apply the character functions. So I'm not writing the program here. Just I'm giving an idea. By using character functions, I can split this one column into two columns. Suppose currency one column, salary one column. So currency is about here, rupees, dollar, be like this. Next to salary, here values are there. But still it is a text variable only because the source variable data type is text. So it has created a new variable also as a text variable. After that, by applying some special functions, you can change the data type from text to number. So in SAS, we do have two special functions, input, put. By using those, you can change the data types. So here, 
See, I can change the data type from text to number. After that, by applying some conditions, if conditions, I can convert all these currency into INR, Indian rupees. Suppose today dollar value is 64 rupees. So I can write a program. If C is equals to dollar, then salary is equals to salary into 64, like that. I can write some programs. By using those, I can convert all the money into INR, Indian rupees. Okay, now see here. Here salary is a numeric variable and here this is the currency now, Indian rupees. So here I can do the analysis and I can calculate what is the total salary, what is the average salary in INR. This is the definition here. To convert raw data into SAS required format for analysis. So here I can't do anything, but here I can do the analysis. So as per the requirement, we need to apply here different different transformations. This is the big concept. Formatting, data validation, so many things. We'll discuss all those with example, with real time examples. How it is useful. Even, in jo even joining the tables also comes under data management. So in SQL we are calling joins in basis merge concept. Join the tables. Okay. okay, next to analysis part. Okay, it is completely functional part to calculate the statistics. Okay, here so we can compute simple statistics first, like n, mean, standard deviation, those. Okay, I'll draw here. This is simple statistics. We can use these procedures, means, summary, univariate, so on. These are the procedure names in SAS. Means is a procedure. Summary is a procedure, like predefined procedures. You can use those procedures and by using those procedures, you can calculate the simple statistics. Next to CORR. This is also a procedure name. CORR means correlation. Correlation procedure. For what? Here, to compute relationship between two variables. So here we can find out what kind of relationship is there. Is positively correlated or negatively correlated or neutral. A basic example from our basic mass. Suppose height and weight, two variables are there. Generally between these variables we can find positive correlation. Because when height increasing, generally weight will increase. We can find the positive correlation. And here you can calculate the percentage also. How much percentage is that positively correlated? Next, price and sales. Generally between these two variables, you can find the negative correlation, general comparison. Because when prices are increasing, sales may decrease. And here also you can calculate the percentage. How much percentage these are negatively correlated? And here we will discuss these methods, Pearson, Spearman, Kendall, Ogling, so on. Different, different methods we'll use to find the different correlations. Depends upon the client requirement. Next, uh, rank procedure is there. To compute the ranks. Suppose I'm doing a banking project. There are millions of customers. For example, for HSBC Bank. But client want to see only top 10 customers data. Uh, so now you can apply the ranks here based on their transactions or based on their deposits. So you can pick only the top 10 customers data along with the ranks. This is first. This is second. Next to ANOVA, regression, t-test, so on. These things also. Okay. These. These processes also will discuss. First, we need to discuss about this concept here. Hypothesis test. What is hypothesis test? What are the standard values? Based on the standard values, how to discuss these things, null alternative. When we can say null hypothesis is accepted, when we can say null hypothesis is rejected, null rejected means alternative accepted, then what will happen? Okay, these points we'll cover here, we'll discuss from the basic level. So it is completely functional part, we'll discuss the statistical procedures here. Okay. Okay, from the data, by applying some SAS statistical procedures, you can generate the reports like this. So here, first one is a just a simple statistical report. You can find just these statistics. Frequency, mean, maximum, like this. Second one is a student t-test report. By applying t-test procedure, you can get this one. T-value, probability, value, this. Third one is, what a is that? Report. What Analysis. What second one was report? Student t-test report. Okay. By applying t-test, we have a procedure t-test. By applying that, we can get this one. 
Okay, understand here. See, generating a report is very easy because in SAS you won't apply any formulas or anything. Already predefined procedures are there. A NOVA processor is there, t-test processor is there. Just will give their dependent variables in it, independent variables like that. Then we can get the result. But after that, how to understand the report? That is very, very important. Because even an intermediate student can generate this one. But after that, how to understand these values and based on the T value, probability value, F value, probability value, how to write a conclusion, how to understand the data, that is important. So these points we'll discuss from the basic level, first of all. Even what are the standard values, I will give everything, a structure. Okay. Then we can discuss this in the functional part. Okay. Uh, yes. What is the uh, what is the uh, uh, course available in base and what is the course available in advanced? I will show you here yeah, everything. Just once, let me complete these slides and I will give you an idea that one. Sure. Next to presentation part. This is the fourth one here. So here we can generate the reports, different types of tabular reports and graphical reports. See, once you joined in a company as a programmer, we'll get protocol, SOP, data format file, SAP, everything. In that SAP is very important, statistical analysis planning. SAP contains TLG, tables, listings and graphs. As a programmer, we need to follow SAP mainly. As for that, we'll generate the different types of tabular reports and different types of graphical reports. As for that, we'll generate them, all these listing, detail, summary, cross tabulation. In the graphical also, we have different types, horizontal, vertical, pi, and so on. All these we'll generate here, okay. like this. It's an example. See, from the data, by applying some SAS reporting process, so we can generate the reports like this. Tabular reports and the graphical reports. Vertical bars, bars, everything. So see, here. now this is the working structure, Mahmoud. In the real time, you may get a chance to work on any domain. Suppose banking, clinical, finance, whatever it may be. But the working structure is same for any project. Okay. Initially, you may get data in different data sources. First, we need to discuss how to import the data from different different data sources to SAS. And here in the classes, I will discuss all methods as I told you. Import procedure, SQL procedure, in-file statement, everything. And once you get the data into SAS, then we'll discuss the transformations. How to join the data, how to append the data, how to create new columns, how to sort, everything. Then we'll discuss some statistical procedures. Then reporting part. How to generate the reports followed by statistical analysis planning. This is what you say the basic uh, SAS is it? Base and advanced. See simple. Base means the basic concept like procedures, control statements, loops, arrays, all this comes under base SAS. Advanced means SQL and macros. Those two are called advanced SAS. SQL and macros. So in this mm -hmm. course we cover both base SAS and advanced SAS. Both will cover. Okay. In macros, what will happen in macros? Sorry, come again? In macros, uh, what will, actually what is macro? Um, okay, I will show you that also, okay. No, I will show you. Suppose here, I have 1000 tables. So far I have derived 1000 tables. Now here, we need to generate different types of graphs here, uh, vertical bar, horizontal bar, so on. So if you don't know macros, then you need to write 1000 programs to generate the graph for 1000 tables. But if you know macros, just write down one macro program, only one macro program. With the help of loops, control statements, you can write a big macro here. After that, no need to write the total program. Suppose these are the parameters there. Table name. Uh, G type means graph type. Variable 1, variable 2. Suppose. Suppose I want to generate a graph for bank table. I want to generate here block chart. Between the variables, for example, um, product and uh, profit, something like this. Means instead of writing the total program, just we are passing the parameter information here. Means I want to generate a graph for the bank table. Uh, this is my graph, required graph, block chart between these variables. Okay, like this. 
This is the concept of macros. Means instead of writing the same program n number of times, you can use macros. Even for graphs, even for import, for any program, you can use macro. You can create a macro and you can use. Only one time we have to create a macro. After that, n number of times you can use that one. Okay. Then see here. Mm -hmm. So in our classes here, I will cover technical part and functional part both. In technical, we'll cover mm -hmm. both base SAS and advanced SAS. Both will cover in this course. Mm -hmm. First, we'll start with base SAS. It takes around 15, 16 hours minimum. Then we'll go for advanced SAS, SQL, macros, those. That is also around 14, 15 hours. We'll cover both. Mm -hmm. Then we'll discuss some functional 